Dale and J. Harvey Lewis, and in today's video, I'm going to teach you how easy it can be to grow a lot of papayas. And um, before we start, though, I want to uh, give you a little bit of a riddle and see if you can solve it. Okay, what is something you can use at your house? Doesn't involve chemicals, doesn't involve drugs, doesn't involve um, anything that is, uh, you know, typically frowned upon, but you can get very high with it. But most people have it at their house. So what am I talking about? Did you figure it out? Okay, I'm talking about a ladder. So I'm actually up on a ladder right now. And whoa, try not to fall. So if you want to get high, I would suggest you would use a ladder. This is not the highest ladder, but it still does the trick for my papaya harvesting. By the way, that joke is brought to you by my middle school science teacher, Mr. Nichols, wherever you are, if you're watching, thank you for that. And, um, can't take credit for it, y'all. I've got plenty of jokes my, myself, but um, you have to wait for those. Anyway, so I've got these beautiful, beautiful papayas. I've got two bunches of them right here, and over there I've got another few bunches hidden in the bushes, um, and just a ton of food. And you know, if you're in zones nine or ten, you can probably grow that. Which means if you're in, um, you know, <clears throat> central, even up to North Florida. Um, southern central Texas, uh, most of Louisiana, um, possibly parts of South Carolina in the south near the coast, and um, parts of Southern California and all of Hawaii, you can grow a lot of this stuff. And even if it gets killed by um, you know, kind of a, a light freeze, it will come back. So I, they have survived 25 degrees. These papayas specifically have come back. This is actually, these are technically one plant. They came back from the root of another single papaya plant. So here's another plant I had and this got killed by a freeze and I just want to show you what happens when it gets killed by a freeze. This is all one plant but it has many many stems and a lot of these are producing fruit. The dry um, winter time season is the best time to trim these back. You know let's say these are too tall for you and you want to keep them at like uh, six feet tall instead of 12 which is usually how tall they grow. If you let them, uh, you know, make sure you don't cut them in the wet season because a lot of times they will start to rot very quickly and you'll lose the plant. There's so many people that come to Florida or they're uh, getting into gardening and they're thinking, oh my gosh, yeah, I get it. Um, you know, gardening is just like so amazing, but how am I ever going to do it? It's just so difficult. It's going to take me so much time and energy. No, with the method I'm going to teach you, you're going to spend like zero time. You're going to forget about them and then the next year you're gonna have a bunch of papayas and they might even be producing within a year. Sometimes they take two, maybe three years depending on where you plant them. But in general, they're pretty darn easy. And um, you can see actually these little knobbies on the end. I've harvested papayas all up through the season. So we've gotten probably 100 pounds of fruit from each tree. So each of these was where a little, I'm sorry, papaya was growing from. Boom, 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 boom. And um, now we have a few that are ready to pick. So I'm gonna pick that one over there and we're going to get started. So I'm back here, I've harvested my papayas and now we're about to prepare them. So I'm gonna explain kind of how you know what's ripe and what's not and a little bit more information about papayas in case you haven't really seen them. If you have seen these in the store in the supermarket, you probably notice these things are way expensive. I think I've seen them um, $6.99, $7.99 a pound. Um, at the supermarket and if you buy them when they look about like this it's actually okay because once they get here and they start to turn color um, this is actually prime but uh, this flavor will change as it uh, matures if you eat it like this it's gonna taste kind of like a cantaloupe and this is gonna taste a little sweeter and have more of a unique papaya-ish flavor um, which I guess you really just have to try papaya to know what it tastes like um, but I like them um, you can also dry them out. We've grown so much papaya. This is like the end of um, all the papaya we, we dried out. We had two gallons of that at one point and we still got plenty more to harvest. We've been harvesting these things since March and it is now June. And so these are mega food production. Anyway, let's just go ahead and do a little weigh in to, to show you how much you could save. Now, um, you gotta pay attention at the grocery store. Um, a lot of the papayas you're gonna see are not organic. Um, they've been genetically modified so they can resist certain um, things. Let's see. Is this showing you? Can you see that? Okay. And 
this is almost sitting right almost at two pounds. This one over here just weighed that in a pound and a half. So that's about three and a half pounds of papaya. And you saw how much more I've got there. Um, going at the typical organic prices in the supermarket, that'd be about 30 bucks. So yeah, it, and you, <laughs> most people don't even get papaya unless they know what it is because of the fact that it is expensive in the stores. And it's really hard to find organic at the stores. Like I said, they've been genetically modifying these for quite a while now. Um, now, in, why would you want papaya in the first place other than the fact that it's pretty delicious unless you let it go overripe. If you let it go overripe, it kind of, you want to avoid it. Just throw it in the yard somewhere, put a little dirt on it and you'll have more papayas. And that's really as simple as it is to plant new papayas. But um, you know, let's get into some of the, the benefits of having papaya. So you can see this, it's full of seeds and it is a beautiful uh, reddish orange color. If you wanted to try to plant all these seeds, you could probably get um, a few hundred papayas growing just from this one plant. There's only so much papaya you can eat and grow, but you know, these are really interesting seeds that are kind of, they have like their own little um, moisture pouch around them and I just burst it. Inside is kind of a, a strange textured um, seed. And um, you know, I just threw those in the yard. They might come up as papayas. I've had so many that I'm just giving away plants at this point. I didn't even know why they're coming out of certain parts of my yard. I guess I dropped some seeds here and there. Um, and so that's really how easy it is to grow. But why would you want to have these delicious plants? Well, they're full of vitamins. They've, shown, uh, they've been shown to have uh, lots of B vitamins, uh, vitamin C, calcium, and some others. And they also have some anti-cancer properties. Um, if there's been some studies that they've shown uh, to actually, I believe it's with prostate cancer, shown some benefits. Um, and even if you can't grow these to get fruit, you could still grow the leaves. So if you're not in a tropical area and you wanna just grow the leaves and make that uh, tea, you could do that. I'll get a spoon actually, and I'll kind of take these seeds out and then I'll cut them into slices and then you can just take the top off. Anywho. So, this papaya is perfect right here. But, look, imagine this was a papaya that I couldn't eat the whole thing, it was kind of going bad. I would just chuck it over there in the yard, go back, kind of like kick some dirt over it. I wouldn't even bother to like digging a hole. And then the next year I'd have papayas growing up. Actually, probably within six months, I'd have like decent sized little sprouts. You can also cook these when they're green and they're more of a squashy potato-y flavor if you cook them green. Um, I think that you do need to be a little careful with these when they are green. I think some people have an allergic reaction. I think there's like a latex-like substance that comes out of them. I could be wrong on that, but you can have skin reactions when they're not fully ripe if you try to process these. Um, but you can cook them when they're green. Also, a lot of people, it's very popular in uh, Southeast Asia, certain parts of Central America. Actually, these plants come from Central America. Just to show you how easy these are, I don't even know how this plant got here, but I'm gonna take you back and show you. This is actually something that, um, according to legend, the guacamole guy actually grows his papayas like this exclusively almost. And um, I've got a papaya here coming up out of an old wheelbarrow that I'm growing aloe in back here. I don't even know how it got here. I have no recollection of putting it here. Maybe a bird picked up a seed, ate the seed, and then like it ended up here. So just to illustrate how easy it is to plant these, watch what I'm gonna do. And I'm serious, it's this easy. I'm gonna do that. Or, you know, if you were just done with this papaya, you could throw the whole thing in there, but I'm gonna eat some of it later, so. And then you kind of just do that. It's really that easy. And as long as it's not too dry, you should be fine to just leave it there. I usually plant right before the rainy season and that way I don't really have to worry about it. Out of that, maybe 30 seeds, I'll probably have about 10 of them coming up and I'll have to kind of weed some of them out, give some of them away, but it's exciting. You can be a gardener too. It really doesn't take as much effort as you think. Um, you just gotta know which plants grow well in your area. So in the comments, make sure to tell us about some of the plants that you've grown with very little effort in your area. And maybe if you are 
in the north and you figured out a way to grow papayas in the north, let us know how you did that. Did you start them in a wheelbarrow and then let them grow in the summertime and then when it got cold you pushed them in over into your garage and had the heater going? How did you keep your papayas alive if you were up north? Leave that in the comments below. Anyway, it's been really fun hanging out in the garden with you all and I hope you learned something. And if this video was helpful for you and you know some people who could use a hand with some gardening tips, definitely be sure to share this video. Hit the like, subscribe button, all that stuff. I can use all the help I can get because I think I've got like 10 followers right now, but I appreciate every one of you who has done that. And if you don't know like how to do the YouTube thing, uh, if you have a Gmail account, you can pretty much just sign in and subscribe and that really helps me a lot to get my videos out to more people. I'm gonna update you later on on the status of my vehicle and my trip across the US. So stay tuned for that. I'm Jay Harvey Lewis and I will see you next time.